What is up? What is up? What is going on? Why is my video lagging? Why is there cheeseburgers on my shirt? Who cares? So the watchman found this video for me. The watchman is the man. Please subscribe. He helps the cause any way he can on short notice. So earlier we were watching this and the watchman found it for me. He sent it to me and there's like a powerhouse of ladies. One strong woman after another, after another, after another, just pounding this this uh, Palm Beach County. I didn't even listen to what the commissioner said because the, the two 30 seconds I heard was, you know, you restaurant owners don't need to get cute. And him getting cute is disobeying the city commission and trying to feed their families. He calls it getting cute. Anyway, let's watch these ladies shred these uh, county commissioners at Palm Beach. Angelique. The video is going to lag for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. Contreras. Followed by Jean Marie Nasser. Every time, every time. Followed by Rachel Ede. There's the leg. You're recognized. I can't even say thank you. I can't even appreciate any of you sitting on that board except for Hal Valache. He's the only one that stands for us. The only one. We are sick of what is happening. Guys, these businesses have been here since 9 a.m. Some of these businesses came last week and were completely shut down for public comment. It is unfair that you guys get to. Lag. Collect your paychecks while these businesses continue to stay closed. As you can tell, I am not happy today. And I appreciate you putting me first. I don't know why you do, I guess because I'm too loud for you guys. But you know why I'm loud? Because my family lost everything in Cuba to communism. And that is exactly what is happening here. You what? need to tell businesses they keep when they get to open what? and in what stages? Absolutely not. Did you guys not listen to Governor DeSantis? We're not going backwards. We're not shutting back down. So these stages of if we're in the red or if we're in the green or if we're in the yellow, you get to open? No, except the governor's met. Leg. Which were requested by Virginia Baker and Kerner on June 5th. That was done without a vote. Yes or no? It was done without a vote. So this delay of we need to have a discussion. Virginia Baker, under the emergency order, you have the power to open businesses. You just did it on Monday for acupuncture when Denise, she said she wanted to stick needles in her eyes. That's how you guys feel about small businesses opening back up? Yeah, we see your emails. We see what you guys say to each other. It's ridiculous. While these businesses have to be shut down and closed, you guys are laughing? You're laughing. This is where we're at in America. This is disgusting. Laughing about our businesses? You're, ba you're laughing about our livelihoods? I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Kerner, you say that you feel for the people, but it's not true. You further delay the conversation when you, under the emergency order with Bill Johnson, Dr. Alonzo, with Virginia Baker, have the power to write this letter to the governor and say, you know what? We want to go into full phase two. We have the lowest positivity rate out of every single county in the state. And if masks work, why isn't our county open? Why are we the only ones with South Florida that are still closed? Why? Someone explained to me, you said we have a mask mandate in every single county. If masks work, why isn't our county open? Why are we doing this in stages? I am totally opposed to these five stages. These people's livelihoods don't have stages left. These people's businesses don't have stages left. Can you pause for time? Please? I hope that all of you vote opposed to these stages and say, we accept the governor's metrics. You have five seconds left. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Your comments are very important to us. 
If there are further outbursts or show of support or opposition that is verbal and interrupts the Board of County Commissioners, you will be removed from the chamber. You have five seconds left. So all they know is threats. Nobody's gonna be removed from this room because our voices need to be heard. Your time has expired. Thank you, ma'am. We have Jean Marie Nacer followed by Rachel Eid, followed by Talita. All women, all powerful, all smart. Why are we moving the goalposts? Have any of you on this board asked where this 5% goal came from? Because I have. I haven't gotten an answer from this county. I haven't gotten an answer from Dr. Alonzo, but I did get an answer from the state. And that 5% is not a state goal. That This is hardwired to Ethernet. Goal of 5% was merely mentioned in an interview by the head of the CDC, Dr. Redfield. It is not an official plan. It is not a physician statement of the CDC. It's not a goal adopted by the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists. And Dr. Alonzo has said it in this meeting to this board. This board decides the goals. This 5% that is being referred to was mentioned in an interview by Sorry. CDC Dr. Redfield. It's not an official position statement. And the context of what it was mentioned was about reopening schools, nothing else. And he said, quote, this is to help facilitate reopening of schools for face-to-face -face learning. They are not really put out there to be a rationale for somehow to keep schools closed. And he goes on to say, um, consider it to be more cautious, particularly in those areas that have prevalent. Sorry. Rates a percent positive more than 10%. Does this board know what a prevalence rate is? That is not that percent that is now at 3.49%. A prevalence rate is per 100,000 people. That was presented today, and our county is at 2.9%, while the state is at 3%. That is our prevalence rate. So if you want to quote the CDC in this interview, that's not an official position statement. Under Ten percent prevalence rate we have been under that because we only first started getting this data since last meeting that is a prevalence rate per 100,000 people last meeting we were at see this sh this stuff shouldn't even be argued it should be this is unconstitutional you don't have the authority to tell us what to do the Bill of Rights didn't get suspended because of this scam three percent now we're at 2.9 percent so we are well below any stated goal by the CDC in an interview. And my, I remind you, it's not an official position statement. So please, if you're going to adopt metrics, which you said for reopening this county, understand where these metrics are coming from. I had to get this from the head of the state epidemiologist. It was an interview link. It's not an official goal. And it has... It's been said to this board that Ron DeSantis, our governor, that is not his goal for the reopening plan. It's 10%. We have met the governor's metrics. It's time to reopen. You guys sent a letter to the governor on June 5th to reopen phase two with two exceptions of bars. And you know what our, our rate was reported then? That was the first time we saw the first positivity of the lab's rate. That was 7.3%. That rate is 3.49% today. You You requested to go to phase two above 7% for the positivity of the labs back in June. And please don't blame this on the governor because if you want the governor to open, rescind your powers and tell him you rescind your powers and he will open us up because I guarantee you he wants to see this county opened up. Thank you, ma'am, for your comments. Thank you.
We have Rachel Eid followed by Talita, followed by Josie Makovic. Ms. Eid, you're recognized for three minutes, ma'am. Purpose is the essential element of you. It is the reason you're on the planet. This is good. This girl's good. All right, all right. Stop messaging me for a second. This particular time in history and your very existence is wrapped up in the thing you're here to fulfill. Chadwick Bozeman, many of you know him. He lost a battle to cancer silently after four years. And although we're not losing a battle to cancer, Palm Beach County residents are losing a battle in silence. And I'm here today to be a voice for those people. Today, commissioners, your very existence will either be celebrated or I fear mourned based on the response to what decision is made for this county on phase two. Again, echoing, we are below the state rate and we never did this, this robust conversation This vote never occurred in our initial request for phase two. And another conversation never occurred when you rescinded that phase two. The days of working without our constant eyes on, and ears on your pulse are over. You will never again have the benefit of our silence. We're in your public records now, we're swarming your agendas, and we're telling the truth and the stories that you that's so aggravating continue to silence about it. for the people of Palm Beach County we already know you came here today with this agenda that was prepared weeks ago we know you'll vote on this horrific phased phase two and we reject this plan it's our lives our children our futures our business and you've turned it into some crappy Apple software phase 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, when we qualify for a full phase two. You have proven unable to manage this crisis. It's time that you take responsibility. And since we know your vote will vote in favor, let's take responsibility for the things that Palm Beach County should know. Commissioner Weiss, on June 21st, you responded to an email suggesting that the mask mandate will only be lifted if there is a vaccine available. We strongly reject that. No commissioner responded to an email from a 19-year-old, 19-year-plus bar owner saying his family was having to make the decision to move outside of Florida. Based on your decision, many bar owners either commit suicide or leave the state because we are being crushed. No response. Restaurants and bars shall be open at 100%. Internally, joking when another acupuncture emails. Seeking guidance on his reopening. Ms. Neiman says she makes me want to stick a needle in my eye. 2,000 unanswered child abuse hotline calls have happened in the state of Florida since this began. No conversation here by the board. No one wants the test. No one wants the vaccine. In your words, Weinroth, release us, reward us. We reject it. And Governor DeSantis, I'm speaking directly to you. Release us from these. Tyrants. Thank you, ma'am, for your comments. We have Talita. Followed by Josie Makovic, followed by Cindy Falco DeCorado. Amy recognized for three minutes. Hygiene, Mayor Commissioner Weinwath, these gloves is just an excuse not to wash your hands in the bathroom. And and leg. This upsets me, man. Stop lagging. You want to test our caca and pee pee and poo poo? Yeah? Great. I used to be a Democrat. Democrats fought against women's rights to vote for 80 years, and a bad actor on this board was brought to tears <laughs> being able to sit in her seat. Not too late to change parties. They also believe a woman has a right to decide what she does with her body. Then, why don't I have the right to decide how to manage my bodily autonomy? The buck stops there, huh?
I used to wear a mask when I was sick in fear of infection. Healthy people do not wear a mask. Oddly enough, I'm able to take it off 10 feet from where I was sitting. Clearly, it's about compliance and not about safety. Weiss stated in the emails in July, news, news flash people, the masks are, are to be worn until there's a vaccine. So how much money is, is to be made from vaccines? So here we are today, the board has proven they don't care about the science or data, they don't care about the elderly or suicide victims, they don't care about those with exemptions from... So annoying. ...from wearing a mask, they don't care if it takes food from your table, they don't care about your business or your favorite local small shop. At first, the quarantine didn't bother me. At the same time, I knew others were struggling. I never worried about what, was going, what I was going to eat, but I knew others waited hours in line at the food bank. I supported small businesses instead of corporations, but now after being refused entry because of a mask mandate, even having three exemptions on the list of a total of eight, I'd rather show you the people how democracy works. As Kerner said, democracy works. I think they're ready for the less agenda. Remember, you make more money from the CARES Act, so keep up with the COVID positive cases, cases, COVID hospitalizations, COVID deaths, make your money. The mask mandate was unanimously decided among the commissioners I stand before because a deal was signed a week prior, June 17th. Make your money. The voters don't care that it's not about safety. Look at your good little sheep complying with the mask and businesses that enforce it in fear of the COVID education team. This is what the people voted for. You're doing a great job according to their standards. So keep up the great work. Make sure that the coffee shop has to permanently close its doors. Surety has to shut off her AC to minimize utility. bills. Also, not forgetting laying off two employees, but she supports your democracy. Oh, my favorite, the snitch lines, because Palm Beach County really needs to use those resources, keeping people in line and businesses in accordance with the government. I personally know somebody who's exempt and was laid off yesterday violating her rights. Let's continue to encourage masks as you do so well on Facebook. Seems as if no one is aware of the exemptions, making it much harder for those with exemptions. I laminated a copy of my PBC ordinance and have to wear a body cam to protect my rights. B businesses have... She has to wear a body no cam. No clue on the legal mess they can find themselves. She has to wear a body You have to wear a body camera in America now to protect yourself from the government. Think about that. Helps in once they violate a person's civil rights. As it says in section nine of the ordinance, any provisions within the ordinance of the order that conflicts with any state or federal law because of the or constitutional provision. Great job on the sheep. Clearly don't know how your constitutional protects us, but you know how to cover yourselves. Thank you, ma'am, for your comments today. We have Josie Makovic, followed by Cindy Falco de Corrado, followed by Michael Goodwin. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you recognized for three minutes. Good afternoon, after I've been sitting here for four hours today. So much fun. This drafted phase two has five steps, essentially five phases, which makes Palm Beach County's reopening plan seven phases instead of three. Nowhere else is this being done. Not in a state plan or a federal one. This county discriminates against people based on the businesses they run and separates local businesses who into who is allowed to make money and feed their families and who isn't. This plan will cause confusion and unrest because most citizens will be unclear about which businesses are allowed to open, to operate at which level of capacity, and all of the nuanced craziness that you guys just showed us. This will lead to the Nazi, I mean, county stormtroopers being called out to bust in on law-abiding citizens and threaten their livelihoods. The people of this county don't deserve this treatment after having their businesses unlawfully shut down for so long, discriminating against local businesses because they don't fit the category that is being favored at that moment is wrong. The citizens of this county should never be living in fear of government intrusion into their law-abiding lives. Some serious questions need to be answered before this ridiculous plan is talked about. What are the benchmarks for moving through the stages? We know that you will move the goalposts at will, so what will keep you from doing so with these, quote, stages? What about the businesses that don't qualify to reopen for several more months? How are they supposed to actually keep their doors open, pay their rents, put food on their tables, pay for their mortgages, and more? This plan and the timeline are completely unacceptable. We know the COVID-19 tests are bogus. We've already covered that. We know the new information from the CDC, which, by the way, I was easily glossed over. The actual number of deaths of COVID-specific related deaths was 9,210 people in a country of over 300 million. It was easily glossed over, but let's not forget those numbers. We the 
people will not put up with our businesses being closed any longer for no good reason. And trust me, you are not providing a good enough reason. The other thing I want to talk about today is treatments. We constantly hear that there is no treatment for COVID-19. That is simply not true. What? There are three treatments that are being talked about and that are scientifically proven to actually work. So the fact that they're not being talked about, that they're not being promoted, that they're not making us immediately be able to remove these stupid masks because you want to wait until, make us wear masks until there's a treatment, it means that you are either ignoring the science or you are playing politics. I don't know if you saw right there, but the lady at the other opposite side of the podium, look at all these morons that have glass shields. This is ridiculous. This country's turned into a a slop bucket of nonsense. Are you kidding me right now with this crap? Well, everyone's going to have a glass shield around them and live in a bubble. I stopped wearing my mask weeks ago. I go into stores, Walmart all the time. I'm the only one not wearing a mask. No one says a word. The one lady said only 9,000, some less than 10,000 people died from actual, the beer bug actually. We've heard multiple times that this isn't political. This is about our safety. This isn't political. This is about our safety. If that were true, then why are these treatments not being promoted? Why are they not being talked about? And why are they not having an impact on the fact that our county is still closed and that you are still muzzling five-year-old children in 95-degree weather, which should be a crime? Yes, child abuse. Do you not believe in science, or is there another reason that you are not talking about it? If you refuse to open up, then you clearly have other motivations, and we the people will not tolerate it anymore. We are done with this. We are done playing with you playing politics with our businesses, our children, and our very lives. This isn't a game to us. Open the county immediately with no sieges and remove the mask mandates. People of Palm Beach County, now is the time to stand up and say enough is enough. They're only getting away with this because we let them. We have the power, not these sitting up here. Please look into the things that I'm saying. Step out of the shadow of fear and into the light of freedom. Thank you, ma'am, for your comments. All women. All women. Where you at, guys? You watching the NBA playoffs with no fans? You watching hockey? You doing fantasy football? You hoping Tom Brady throws to uh, the big Lebowski tight end, whatever his name is? Gronkowski, Lebowski, whatever. Same crap to me. Meanwhile, the women of this country are taking the, the tyrants on head on. So I believe if you look to the right, and I'm not a big fan of leopard print or tiger print or wild cat print clothing but she can wear whatever she wants whenever she wants she can roll around in dookie for all i care this lady's amazing if it's the one i think it is again thanks watchman for sending me this with there she goes opening the door going to serve them all uh charges complaints for treason against the american people because they don't have the authority to do any of these things they can't force you to wear a mask that's involuntary servitude. The thing is, they've been doing this kind of stuff incrementally with traffic code, uh, city code, ordinances, all the BS, communist, socialist, fascist things that they're doing through the barrel of a gun. And anyone that's nor been normalized to that and thinks it's all normal, it's not. That's not freedom. And this lady lays into them hard, and I love her. Cindy Falco DeCarado. Followed by Michael. In the future, please do not approach the dais or I'll you'll have, re have you removed from the... Another threat. That's all they know how to do. ...the chamber. Please get off here and get back to the microphone. If you have something to give to us, you can give it to the clerk or a member of the county staff. Thank you very much. I appreciate yes, that. Yes, ma'am. Let me share what I just served. I just served a non-negotiable notice of complaint. This non-negotiable notice of complaint is being filed today, Tuesday, September the 1st, 2020, at the Board of County Commissioners meeting in Palm Beach County, Florida. The non-negotiable notice of compliant complaint is to inform the Palm Beach County Mayor, Dave Kerner, Vice Mayor, Robert S. Weinroth, Palm Beach County Commissioners, Melissa McKinley, Greg K. Weiss, Mac Bernard, Mary Lou Berger, and Hal R. Valache, and the Palm Beach County Administrator, I'll take a Mary Lou Berger medium rare with the works. Verdina C. Baker of the following violations. You are all under violation and operating outside of your oaths of office. And both the floor... And have been for a long time and so have police departments. They're so far past their oaths to the Constitution. It's disgusting. And they violate a lot of these laws. She's about to list. They actually violate them. 
on a regular basis and don't even know it. Florida State and the U.S. Constitution. You are all acting outside of the authority of your office and do not have the governing authority to shut down Palm Beach County and mandate anything. You are all in violation of Florida State and federal constitutional law. You are all in violation of the people at large unenailable rights. You are all in violation of the following codes. 18 U.S. Code 241, 18 U.S. Code 242, 18 Code U.S. 245, 18 U.S. Code uh, 1962, 18 U.S. Code 1031, 18 U.S. Code 1038, and 18 U.S. Code 1341 and 42, and U.S. Code 1983, 42 U.S. Code. 42 U.S.C. 1983 is the, is the law that the Police violate constantly when they force you to ID against your will under threat, duress, and coercion. That's a 42 U.S.C. 1983 violation. When they tell you you can't record, shine flashlights in your camera, take your camera, detain you, any violation of the Bill of Rights falls under 42 U.S.C. 1983. And when they commission, when they say you can't open your private business and you can't do this and you can't stand here and you can't assemble there those are all 42 usc 1983 violations deprivation of rights do we have inalienable rights or not i say we do she says we do the commissioners and the police and all the government employees and the judges and all them sovereign citizens they don't think that we have rights they think that the things they've written after the bill of rights somehow supersede the bill of rights and they don't and the way that governments find that out is through revolutionary war, because they can never back down one inch of their power, uh, their ill-gained power. 1985, 42 U.S. Code 3617. This is an official notification of your violations. You need to understand this. No one is above the law. And legislation law on obligation under 42 U.S. Code 1986, a duty to prevent a wrong from being done. You have not done that. And 18 U.S. Code 1621, citing the neglect to protect by individual under oath. 16 American Jurisprudence 24, Section 98, while an emergency cannot create power and no emergency justifies the violation of... An emergency cannot create power. So if you didn't have any power to do this stuff before the emergency, you don't have it now. It's pretty simple. Power of the provision of the United States Constitution of the United States of America. No emergency has just cause to suppress the Constitution or the people at large unenalienable rights. From the 16th American Jurisprudence Section Edition, Section 177, the general misconception that any statute passed by legislators bearing the appearance of law constitutes the law of the land. The U.S. Constitution is a supreme law of the land. That's the Bill of Rights and Constitution, which is all the same, but that is the law. If you think rolling through a stop sign and you get to use physical violence against me, impede my freedom, steal my money, if you think that's valid and the Bill of Rights is not valid, then you're an imbecile. You stop watching sports, start reading books, start reading. Everything's right here at your fingertips. If you're ignorant, it's because you're an, id you're an imbecile and you're not willing to do the work. There's a lady right here. She did the work. She's uh, spewing, uh, she's spewing uh, venom at the, the tyrants up on the dais. What are you doing? I've done this before too, but this is before YouTube was a thing, really. I should start doing it again. I think about it. And any statute to be valid must be in agreement. It is impossible for both the Constitution and law. That's important. Any statute must be in agreement with the Constitution to be valid. And I'm not going to wait for the Supreme Court to rule on it. I can read plain English in the Bill of Rights. It's pretty simple. The Bill of Rights means we're free, we're the free people, you're the servants, you are there because of us, you don't tell us what to do, we tell you what's going to happen in our city, county, state, not the other way around. Law violating it to be valid, one must prevail. Any court... Going back 10 seconds. Land and any statute to be valid must be in agreement. It is impossible for both the Constitution and law violating it to be valid. That's right.
traffic code, victimless crimes, drug laws, IRS, on and on and on. Those are all illegitimate entities. Alphabet agencies that are unelected. Get out of here. One must prevail. Any court government or uh, government officer who acts in violation of, in opposition of, or contradiction of the foregoing by his or her own actions commits treason and includes this treason, which is punishable by death. You could be killed in America, put to death for committing treason. I'm going to look up treason. Self-executing section three of 18, a 14 amendment and vacates his or her office. Ma Abusing your, your power. Expired. I will say with the comments. last thing that you have been served and what that is in violation and your bonds will be pulled if you do not comply within 10 days. Thank you. I sure hope that has teeth. They can't ignore it. Whatever their bonds are, I don't know what that means. But here, stop treason. The crime of betraying one's country. The crime of betraying one's country. That's like almost every government employee with any authority. Especially by attempting to kill the sovereign, which is us, or overthrow the government. The action of betraying someone or something. That, I mean, America's government is treasonous altogether. But she's specifically pointing out this Palm Beach County Commission and how they've ruined lives and they think they're all high on the horse because they get to make these decisions and affect everybody's lives, even though they don't have the authority to do so or the legal power to do so. They just take it because we let them. Look at all these ladies fighting for you. What are you doing? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Bernard, you're recognized, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner Bernard is scared of a woman in leopard print skirt. So he needs armed tyrants to guard the little gates so someone can't get within their windscreen, a foot or two of their windscreen. Um, if, if it's possible, can we have uh, deputies to guard both stations? You coward. For us. Uh, guard both stations. That way we don't get served with any more paperwork. I'm sure they can accommodate that. Thank you. Yeah, they're laughing in your face, you coward. You're a coward, bro. Thank you, deputies. Just one second, sir. We have Mr. Michael Goodwin, followed by Jennifer Cartwright, followed by Emily uh, Balaguer. Mr. Goodwin, is it you're recognized for three minutes, sir? All right, this guy's good, too. And then this will be the last one, I hope. Hello. You, this is an eight-hour meeting. Good job, Watchman, finding this footage. Mayor, commissioners, staff, um, thank you for allowing me the time to express my concerns. Calling, thank you. My name is Michael Goodwin. I'm the owner of Crazy Uncle Mike's Brewery in Boca Raton. I ride a motorcycle to work every day. I snorkel with the sharks, and I jump out of airplanes for fun. I'm more afraid of the COVID education and compliance task force than I am of getting COVID. He's more worried about the gunmen they've hired to keep everybody safe. Think about that. They come in eight to 10 deep. Half of them are dressed in military garb and they're not coming to make my business better. No, they're not. They're, again, they're saying it right to their stupid face and they just ignore it. They ignore all these people. They're going to ignore them. If anything happens with this paperwork, this lady served them, make it happen nationwide. I've been raided a dozen times since you guys put that task force in place. Raided. A dozen times. And every time I've been in compliance, I run. <clears throat> Sounds like they just don't like him. I've owned and operated uh, restaurants for the past 36 years in locations from New Mexico, Nevada. Here, I've been the vice president of the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas and in Punta Cana. I'm a professional operator. I take the laws and regulations seriously. I respect the license that I have, I've been, that I've been allowed uh, to, to operate with. And I have worked allowed for the diligently to always abide by all of the regulations. The COVID situation took us all by surprise and no one knew what to do as we didn't know what it was. The worst case scenario was assumed and a lockdown ensued. We now have more information and we have, more, have to acknowledge that this virus isn't what we thought it was in March. And since March, I've been closed for eight weeks. 
I've been allowed to operate at 25%. I've been allowed to operate at 50%. And then they closed me for hours. Not only can I only have 50% of my business, now I have to shut hours that were actually very important to my business. Those hours after 9 o'clock. People, just so you understand, that means it's not his business anymore and he doesn't own it or get to say what happens in his own private business. These people up here who send gunmen out to private businesses, they own the business now. It, if it's my business, how can gunmen come in and tell me what to do in my business? It's not my business anymore. Just like if you have to pay a yearly rent on your property, it's not your property. This is pretty simple stuff here. They just, yeah, we'll, we'll come, we'll send gunmen if you don't do what we say, but you're free. Clock 67% of my particular business is done after nine o'clock at night. And people do eat steaks at midnight at my place. And they do it every day. And they've done it for 35 years in my businesses. So the fact that nothing happens good after midnight that came out of your mouth, Mayor, is wrong. A lot good happens. Feeding my children is one of those things that happens. Again, nothing good happens. Even if that's true, that's your opinion. And that means nothing for anyone else. You don't get to decide what happens after midnight in my life, Mayor, you punk. And it, it is crazy. Please explain to me the data that you have that shows me where keeping the 80 people in my restaurant from 11 o'clock at night until 2 o'clock in the morning has ever affected anybody's life, has ever taken anybody's life, or gotten them sick, because you have no data of that. But yet you're taking away my livelihood. Correct. They, they arbitrarily ruin your life with nothing to back it up with other than their own words, nonsense, and treason. But based on bullshit. Excuse me. If you try to use uh, the excuse that you don't have enforcement, well, you got 10 dudes coming in my place armed up and ready to shut me down every day. And kill you if you try to resist them. You're throwing people out of jail, criminals out of jail because of COVID, but you're wanting to put me in jail. Uh, Bob Galtieri, uh, Pinellas County Sheriff, let guys out of, out of the jail too with COVID. Because I might let a customer walk through my restaurant without a mask. Well, I want you to know upstairs today, if I ran my business, like you run this lobby of this building, they would shut me down and cite me. That's what I say about all government. Every time I've been in a government, government situation, if I ran any of my businesses that I owned, the way government runs, you wouldn't make a dollar and you'd be bankrupt. You understand that, police? The way you guys operate, nobody would pay for that service. Nobody would respect that service. And nobody would want it voluntarily. No one. That guy right there that spoke, he would have given me a citation for what I see in your lobby in this building. But I'm not allowed to do that in my building. It's Hypocrisy? Government? No. Total tyrants? Criminals? No. It's, it's absolutely, it's unfair. It's arbitrary laws. It's, it's crazy. Um, reducing the seating capacity is not unreasonable when it comes down to keeping socially distant. But taking away my hours of operation when I'm doing it legitimately, as you've expressed it. Neither one's legitimate. That way, you, the rules that you've made, and I've done every one of them exactly as expressed. And I think it's crazy that I have to deal with a military force walking into my business on a daily. A platoon of guys ready to kill someone if they dare defend their freedom and their private business. It's a fact. If they send eight to ten armed men in there, and this guy says, get out of my thing. Get out of my, get off my private property. They don't leave. And he says, me and my buddies are going to force you to leave. And if you don't leave, we're going to make you leave with equal or greater force. Those guys, those eight to 10 armed men would be willing to kill him and his friends so they can keep control of his business. Think about that. That's where we're at in America. Sometimes daily, absolutely weekly, but most, most, you know, so often, I can't believe it. They look at the same licenses. They take pictures of every one of my customers. They go in my kitchen, and they take pictures of everything that there is. This isn't, this isn't COVID task force. This is abuse of power. I, I appreciate your comments, sir. I really do. God bless America and the world, baby. <laughs> Thank you. We have, uh, after Mr. Michael Goodwin, we have Jennifer Cartwright, followed by Emily Balliger, followed by John Maples. All right. I'll put the link in the description. Here it is. It's a uh, Palm Beach County. Discover the Palm Beaches, the best of everything. Uh, this is discover.pbcgov.org. County commissioners, 
I don't know. I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the description. Hopefully everything was good and this video came out right. Probably going to lag because my computer sucks really bad. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Peace, tranquility. And you just saw how it's done by several females and one crazy airplane jumper. Peace, tranquility. Bye.